Hi, and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking 3D retro logo effect using Adobe Illustrator and After Effects. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to create a logo. Here's an example of something that I created. Now I'll show you how to actually make it. So I'm just opening up a new Illustrator document. I'm just clicking on the ellipse tool. I'm making sure that the fill is set to none, the stroke black and the stroke size of six. It's gonna draw a circle on the screen and align it to the center. Once I've done that, then I can press S, click on the circle, hold option and shift, to draw another circle just like that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both objects, go to blend, make, and change the blend options to specified steps and set that to two. Once I've got that, then I can expand all of those circles and I'll expand everything. And now I have all my circles ready to go. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to draw a line and I'm just gonna put it into the middle just like that. I'm gonna rotate it uh, 45 degrees. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold option and just duplicate this and then put it there. And I'm gonna do the same for the next circle. Cool, so now once I have that, then I need another final line and this time I'm just going to rotate it the other way. So I'm just going to align that. So now once I have all of that, then it's quite easy. I need to select everything and then go to the shape builder tool and I'm just gonna swap the colors over here and then I'm just gonna draw out my logo. Cool, so that's the logo complete. Now all you need to do is just double click and hold shift and you can select both those inner parts of the logo. Press command X to cut, then highlight everything, delete it, and then paste your logo back in here. Now, once you have that, then what you can do is you can save that as an Adobe Illustrator file and we'll take it into After Effects. So here we are in After Effects and all I'm gonna do is click on a new composition and I'm just gonna set it to 1920 by 1080 pixels, 30 FPS at a duration of about 15 seconds. That's all cool, but the only other thing that I want to change is I need to make sure that I'm in the 3D renderer of Cinema 4D and I'm just going to press OK. Now, once I have that, then what I need to do is I need to import my logo. So if I just go file import, and now this box will pop up and basically I just wanna import it as footage. I'll just put it in there and then I'll just drag it to my timeline. So I'm just gonna increase the scale a bit. Now, depending on how you saved this, if you saved as RGB, it should work automatically if you just turn it into a 3D layer. But if you didn't, what you'll need to do is you'll need to go to layer, create, and then create shapes from vector layer. And then once you have that, then what you can do is you can click this 3D layer button over here, open up the geometry settings, and now you should be able to extrude your logo. So I'm just gonna extrude it by about 20, Five. So now we have a 3D logo and it's ready for everything else. The next thing that we're gonna do in here is we're just gonna add some lighting. So if I just go and right click and add new light and now I'm just gonna add a point light and now I'm just going to move that to probably around about this side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create another light and this time I'm just gonna change the intensity back to 100. And this time I'm just gonna move it on the other side. And then finally, I'm just gonna create another light. And this time I'm gonna put it at the back. So I'm just gonna change the views to two. I'm gonna change it to a top view. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to move this light and put it at the back. So you can play around with some of these settings. This light that I've chosen here, point uh, one, is going to be the most intense. So I'm gonna really bump that up to about 400%. So now once we have that, then the next thing that we need to do is we need to make it animate. So to do that, all we need to do is go to our circle logo, press R, and then I'm gonna hold option click on that stopwatch and I'm just gonna write time times, let's say 75. 
And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will see that the logo is rotating. If you want it to rotate faster or slower, you can just change that value there. But I'm pretty happy with that. I don't want it to rotate too fast. And then we need to move on to the next step. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all of those layers. I'm just going to pre-compose. I'm gonna call that logo. And now what we can do is we can work on the analog effect. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to add some contrast to this. So I'm just going to bump up the contrast probably about to max. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another effect. I'm going to uh, find the Venetian blinds effect. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the transition completion to about 75. And I'm going to change the width to about 8. So now you've got this, you know, really cool kind of lined effect. Um, but we need to duplicate that. So I'm just going to duplicate that and I'm going to change the direction to 90 degrees. And I'm going to change the width to about 4. So now it looks really, really dark. But now we've got the zigzags of the lines crossing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this little icon and just increase the exposure just for now, uh, just so we can actually see what we're doing. So the next effect that I'm going to put on here is going to be a simple choker. And I'm just going to bring that up to about 0.4. And then finally, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a wave warp effect on here. And with the wave warp effect, I'm just going to change the direction, bring it back down to zero. I'm going to change the height to six and the width to, let's say, 1200. And so now we've got you know, a bit of uh, warpiness happening in there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add some glow to this. And if I go down to my glow settings, if I change the threshold to five, the radius to about 17 and the glow intensity to two and the glow colors, I'm going to change from original colors to A and B colors. And I'm going to change the color looping to sawtooth as well so now it looks a bit funky a lot of things are going on and now what we can do is we can take off that exposure and you can see kind of the effect uh, that we have happening there so i think that's looking pretty cool um, and the final thing we're going to do is we're going to change the color so I'm here in color hunt and I'm just going to pick, let's say this yellow and I'm just going to go and change that white to that yellow. And now we've got a cool kind of vintage retro, retro-ish kind of look there. And that looks pretty cool. The next effect that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some individual levels. So if I open up the RGB values and I just drop down the input white to maybe something around 130, you can kind of see what's happening there. Now we're just going to go into the green and I'm just going to change the import black to probably maybe somewhere around there. So now we've got those kind of vibes happening there and I'm just going to go and change the blue. I'm going to do something similar with that. So maybe, maybe somewhere around 84 or something like that. So again, you can play around with some of those settings uh, if you want. The next effect that I'm going to add in here is some curves. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play around with an S bend, maybe like that. So now I've got real vintage vibes on that. So that looks pretty cool. So now the next effect that I'm going to add on here is I'm just going to add some more glow. So you can leave the settings uh, just like that. I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, if you really want to, you can duplicate that glow again, but I don't think I need to do that. So, so now the next effect that I'm going to add in here is just some hue and saturation. And because I'm going to have like a purplish kind of background, I'm just going to kind of rotate it a bit. So there's a bit of purple in there. So I think that Think that looks pretty cool and then finally the last effect in here is going to be posterized time and i'm just going to 
change that and half that so it looks a little bit choppy in that uh, rotation. Once I have all of that, then all we need to do is create the background. So if I create a new solid, call it BG and then drag it underneath. If I add a gradient ramp effect, go back to color hunt. So I'm just going to pick this dark purple and I'm going to put that into there like that. I'm going to change it to a radial ramp. Uh, then I'm going to swap the colors and I'm going to move that point to the middle and then this point over to the side over there and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to change it around a bit so maybe drop that blend with the original to 25 percent just to darken it and then the final effect that we will put on here is a an adjustment layer and i'm just going to make sure that it goes right on the top and i'm just going to search for noise and bump this up to about 15 percent and so now you've got a really cool kind of retro-y uh, kind of logo that is spinning. And so if you want to go back and change anything, you know, you can always go back into your Venetian blinds. And if you feel like the width is too much, you can always change that or you can change the width on the horizontal ones. And so there I've got a little bit different of an effect. So yeah, so cool. So that's how you create this uh, cool looking retro 3D logo effect. I hope you guys uh, learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.